Hello, and welcome to the Scholarly Communications video series from the Hemofarb Health Sciences Library. My name is Brittany Smith, and I am the Metadata Specialist at the Hemofarb Library. Today, we will be discussing how to address health myths and disinformation. Let's get started. Myths and disinformation is information that is false or misleading. While the two words are used interchangeably, there is a key distinction between them. Misinformation is false information that is unintentionally shared, while disinformation is deliberately shared. This distinction is important when it comes to combating the spread of false information in person or online. When engaging in these conversations, avoid using the term fake news. The News Literacy Project states that the term, quote, once referred to misinformation designed to look like legitimate news, but the term has been rendered meaningless and counterproductive through overuse and political weapon weaponization, end quote. There are different types of myths and disinformation. This ranking comes from the Association of College and Research Libraries, or ACRL. The list is organized from lowest to highest potential for harm. First, there is satire or parody, then false connection, misleading content, false contacts, imposter content, manipulated content, and finally fabricated content. Distinguishing between the types of myths and disinformation is important as it will provide you with a starting point to begin a conversation with your patients. Sharing this with your patients will also allow them to speak out against false information in their own personal social circles. Health misinformation can have harmful consequences if it is allowed to freely spread. It can impact the level of trust between healthcare professionals and patients, making it more difficult for patients to follow healthcare advice. Aurora, Madison, and Simpson wrote in their JAMA opinion article that, quote, while health misinformation propagated by media coverage, celebrities, and others is widely recognized, how a range of health misinformation undermines the patient-clinician relationship is less understood. This is important to consider given that trust in health professionals has eroded as evidenced by recent attacks on physicians promoting public health measures during the pandemic, end quote. Addressing health misinformation is also important because people are inundated with information, especially in online spaces, and this can cause media fatigue, which can lead to a, quote, discontinuation of health behaviors that are, dis that are essential to protect individuals, end quote. Finally, teaching patients about health literacy provides them the ability to make informed healthcare decisions for themselves. When starting conversations to address health misinformation, it's best to remain empathetic to the concerns your patients may, ever, may raise. These conversations may spark intense emotions and, may be difficult, and it may be difficult navigating those emotions. A patient's trust in the health science field may break down if they believe they're not being heard by their provider. Another way to combat misinformation is by explaining the research process, process in plain language. Myths and disinformation may arise when new research seems to conflict with older research. Therefore, speaking with your patients about the research and peer review process will help them work through any confusion that may arise when new research findings are presented. When discussing the research and peer review process, you will also want to share the most current research findings with your patients as a way to explain how new information informs current research conclusions. It is also important to remain open, up to, up, to, up to date on myths and disinformation trends and develop a toolkit of consumer health resources to share. Himmelfarb Library's Correcting Misinformation with Patients Guide offers additional tools and advice on conducting these, com these discussions. Additionally, the Consumer Health Resources Guide is a great source for lists of websites and organizations that discuss health information in an easily digestible manner. The guide provides links to sites such as healthfinder.gov, the Mayo Clinic's homepage, Medline Plus, Medline Plus drug information, and more. There are also resources to teach health literacy skills to your patients so they can evaluate the health information they encounter. According to Samuel P. Treathway in his postgraduate medical journal editorial, quote, the proliferation of medical misinformation on social media is a growing global public health concern, end quote. By equipping patients with current and accurate research and teaching them how to evaluate health information, healthcare providers can work with their patients to combat the spread of health myths and disinformation. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Addressing Health Myths and Disinformation. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please visit our video library here where you can also find the associated slides. 
If you have any questions about the material covered in this session, please contact me at bsmith91 at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Hemophart Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you for listening.